So our second award for this afternoon is the Tony Mazaki Award. This is an award given to recognize grassroots health and safety activists in local unions or other local organizations fighting for the health and safety rights of workers. And this year, the person who's going to present our award recipient is Maria Torres. My name is Maria Torres, and I am one of the national field organizers at Interfaith Work and Justice. Um, we are a national organization that works at the intersection of faith and labor. And I am honored to be here to introduce my co-worker, my friend, and one of my most important mentors. Marta Ojeda was born in Nuevo Laredo, Mexico, um, in Tamaulipas. She worked for 20 years in the maquiladora industry, in sweatshops shops, in her hometown. In April of 1994, Marta led the Sony Workers Movement to improve the working, their working conditions. The workers were beaten. They were brut brutally repressed by police forces. Thousands of women took this, the streets demanding their rights and trade unionism. The government ordered the arrest of Marta for enforcing their labor and civil rights. It was then that she immigrated to the United States to escape unfounded persecution by the Mexican government. The Sony Workers case was the first case brought against the government of Mexico under the National Administrative Department of Labor to settle labor disputes under NAFTA. In 1996, she became the executive director of the Coalition for Justice in Maquiladoras and later she became the executive director of Fe Justicia, a worker center in Houston, Texas. Martha has a law degree from the University of Saturnio Coahuila, and she has been a speaker at the United Nations, and she has received national and international awards because of her work. On a personal note, and in addition to all of these accomplishments, I can say that she's fierce, she's sharp, and one of the few people that I would go to battle with. She's deeply admired and loved by many of us, not just because of her achievements, but because she is a teacher to all of us. Please join me in welcoming Marta Ojeda. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to thank uh, the Compassionate Health and Safety Section, and uh, especially many of you who are been working with us, not just with me, with us, with the workers who we are many, many, many struggles. In Mexico, we were the laboratory of NAFTA. And uh, at the beginning, it was a big change for us, as Maria was introducing me, when we were working on the Sony lines. It's true, yes, I was leading uh, the Sony struggle, and we strike in seven plants, and we were 2,000 women. But all of us, we were on the streets demanding the right to know the chemicals that we were working on. Many children with, uh, were born with birth defects, with an encephaly and a spine bifida. And uh, it was no any information and the chemicals. And that was the reason that when my co-workers were telling me, Marta, I'm afraid, I'm pregnant, but I don't want to have a monster. And we start to identify the areas where all the children were born like that. And uh, we identified the printer department where we were using thinner. We are there later. 
and where we were using acetone and all those chemicals that we never knew. That was the first reason that we were on the streets. More than the wages was really defending our health and our life because reproductive health was one of the major concerns. Yes, I have to came to the United States where the, some of my fellow workers crossed me to the border because the government was trying to arrest me because we were destabilizing the sweatshops industry because we were demanding our rights. Then I would say, what I did wrong, I just was enforcing my rights. The Constitution, the labor law, what we did wrong. And I found many, many people when I was here, undocumented, not knowing language, country, anything. And I found many people who were concerned about the working conditions. And when I became um, the executive director of the Coalition for Justice and the Maquiladora, exactly the organizing that we did in Sony, we started to do with many, many other companies on the Mexican side. But many of you were committed to give your mission, your life, and provide the tools and knowledge to all these workers. And uh, I really thank you so much, many of you who were my mentors, my partners, my colleagues, uh, Garrett Brown, uh, Linda Dale, uh, Tony uh, O'Connor, and uh, Pamela, and many of you who were coming to support the workers, to train them, to map the workplace, to map the body, to learn the, the rights and to get the knowledge. Once they were empowered, no one stopped them. And it was a strike in custom Tree, international complaint, the first international complaint in health and safety, thanks to all your collaboration. And it was also Hanjon, the Nauru industry, and another international complaint. It was a Levi's that was with the stone washing, and workers were learning and was when they take the courage to change the labor conditions. But then the economic crisis happened, and many of those uh, uh, companies were closing, and all those workers were coming here to survive and to find a job. And those same workers who were in the assembly lines, exploited and facing dangerous working conditions, they were facing the same here in the United States. The poultry workers, the meat processing workers. They were finding the same problems with paper knife, carpet tunnel syndrome, where workers were are treated like disposables, where workers are using bleach and, and chemicals that they don't know, and they are living their life in the assembly lines. But then I became the executive director of Fake Justicia Worker Center, and I started to work with construction workers. And I was finding many, many immigrants finding the same challenge, exposed to those worker conditions with fatalities, with injuries, many immigrants, disabled, and wheelchairs that they cannot face their life anymore just because of negligence. So we have many success in many cases, but there is a long road to road. We set precedents with international complaints, but also the first case in uh, Rockwall when uh, OSHA implemented a fine not just to the main company but also to the staffing agencies that they were avoiding the responsibility in that case. But it's been a long road and a long road that we have ahead now with this administration with the challenges that we are facing. And I would like to dedicate this, this award, yes, to all those workers to all those workers, all those children, all those mothers, all those workers who are disabled living their health and their life, but also all those who are fighting to change that, including you, because you are being given the tools and knowledge to all of them to build a better world. Thank you, all of you.